there is a special dedicated rest just for you as a person of God. That's what we are going to be talking about on Single Scripture today. Hi friends, welcome to this morning's. I got to do a big stretch. Welcome to this morning's episode of Single Scripture Today. My name is Jessica, and today we're going to be continuing our study on entering into God's rest, the kind of rest that he has for you, the Holy Spirit-inspired rest that he would like to give you to be able to carry on your merry ways, be able to sleep better at night, to be able to not be so concerned with what's going on in this world, but to be able to be conscious of the things that are going on around around going on around us but yet to be able to give those concerns and those cares to the lord to not not eliminate them but instead to defer them and to be able to trust that god knows what to do better than we know what to do so for today's scripture we're going to talk about ah it's sing this the the series is called single scripture today but we're going to do a single scripture and a half. So it's actually a pretty short scripture, but I'm going to add to it verse 10, which is going to make it about the size of one whole scripture. So Hebrews 4, 9 and 10. And here it is. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. I'm going to break it apart. We're going to go through verse 9 first. That is a promise directed at you. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Did you know that? Did you know that there is a rest for you? That that rest, that 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 feeling that you felt Remember summer days, lazy summer days. Maybe you took a really, really good nap. And there's that split second that you first wake up and everything feels good. The wind feels good. The temperature is right. Nothing hurts in your body. No cramps in your ankles. No no feeling in your spine. But it just feels so good. You feel so rested. There's this there's this um, principle that is talked about and that some scientists have proven that there is a first sleep and that there is a second sleep. And so your first sleep is what you go into when you first fall asleep at night. But sometimes we'll wake up from that first sleep and we'll be wide awake and it'll be like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. And we'll be like, what's up? Why am I wide awake? And maybe we'll pray. Maybe we'll receive the word. Maybe, maybe we'll do other things, clean the house. And then we'll go back to sleep probably around three o'clock, 3.30 for me. It's oftentimes between 3.30 and 4.30. And we'll sleep from about 4.30 to 6.30 or 7. And we will wake up so rested from that second sleep that it will feel like a new person. I don't know what it is. Um, I think that before we had the invention of electricity, a lot of times um, people would, you know, light, you know, they would go to bed early because the lights had gone out and only so much a candle can do. So they'd be getting to bed really early and then they'd wake up and then be super productive at night. I've read articles about people going on visits at night at like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning to their neighbor's houses and eating and having coffee and tea and then going back home to go to sleep to that second sleep. Sleep. and then sleeping so well during that second sleep of condensed sleep maybe maybe our bodies maybe our psyche knows that 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 you know the second sleep is shorter than the first sleep and so you better just pack it in but there's a second sleep of rest there's that wonderful feeling that we feel when we wake up recharged and we wake up and we feel like we're a new person there remains therefore a rest for the people of God I believe that that feeling that we can walk as people of God, that we should be able to walk as the people of God in that same satiated feeling of rest and restfulness. Why was Jesus asleep on the boat in the middle of a storm? 
because he was rested. He had the habit. Where's Jesus? Oh, he's off praying. Where's Jesus? Oh, he's giving alms to the poor. Where's Jesus? Oh, he's out being tempted by the devil for 40 days, communing with God, talking with God. Jesus had a habit of continuing to kind of disappear and go be with the Father in prayer and meditation. Be And this ability to be able to be in the father be with the father in prayer and parent <laughs> prayer and meditation and constantly conversing with god and constantly talking with god and constantly giving over his anxieties i i'm jesus was human like the rest of us it says that he was tempted like us it says that he carried all of the same emotions that we have what he successfully did that no other man in history has ever done is he continued to enter into the rest of god and to be able to be found in that peaceful rested state whenever he was with whenever he was with his followers whenever he was with his disciples when you hear about him going to mary's house and resting and and when you even hear about john writing that he had his you know john laid his head on jesus's breast that that john was right there the the disciple whom christ loved is it's it's like we're almost imagining that john is so close to god and he's so emulating jesus and what jesus is being and how jesus is that john's able to rest and to the point to where they're in the garden of gethsemane and jesus has this moment of of the of total humanity first we know jesus wept it's the shortest scripture in the bible look it up but he has this moment of humanity where jesus says father god if it be your will, <laughs> take this cup from me. He's 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 showing us we're sh we're being seen. All the disciples are asleep. We're actually getting a picture of Jesus in his private time with God the Father, praying to God the Father, communicating, saying, "Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not thy will, but my will be done." That is an example that he received from his mother. For one, the stories about Mar Mary receiving Christ unto her. But it is also an example of what happens when you're in communication with God and you're continually giving over to him those things that you are caring about. Jesus was laboring to enter into the rest of God so much in the Garden of Gethsemane that he began sweating blood. That is the amount, that is the intense that he was in his prayer time with God the Father while all the disciples are sleeping. He is praying and he is confessing his anxiety so much and he is under so much physical duress that he is sweating blood from his pores because he is laboring to enter into the rest of God so that he can walk the work. He can walk into being persecuted, being flogged, being crucified, being tormented, being laughed at, being mocked, being scourged, having a crown of thorns over his head. He is laboring so hard to enter into the rest of God. He is communicating so deeply with the Heavenly Father that blood is pouring out of his pores as he enters into that level of rest for what he knew he was required to do. And so verse 9 here says, there remains a rest for the people of God. Jesus paid the price so that you could enter in directly to the same rest that he was able to walk in as he was being scourged and as he was going to the going to the cross. You do not need to go to the cross. You do not need to be scourged, but you can walk into the same anointed rest that Jesus walked in as he was being called to do the most heinous thing that you could ever do to a human being. But Jesus had rest and Jesus was calm and Jesus was able to walk it and to walk in it with rest and peace. Verse 10 says, for he that is entered into his rest he has also ceased from his own works as God did from his. Now God rested on the seventh day, scripture says in Genesis, he rested and he didn't have to do any more work. That's the same level of rest that the scripture right here is telling you that you can enter into. The same level of rest that says, I believe that God will do for me what no man can do for me that I can't even do for myself. 
and that as I enter into the rest, the same rest that Jesus entered into, the same rest that God entered into on the seventh day, that rest that has been appointed for me, that remains for me as a child of God, I am entitled to it. I am promised it. I don't didn't have to do anything to deserve it. I just need to let go of those things that are weighing me down so that I can be carried and entered into his rest. Tomorrow, we're going to keep talking about entering into the rest of God. Today, as you go through your day, I hope that you continue to inhale the peace of Christ and exhale the stress and the burdens. Have an awesome day, my friends. I will see you tomorrow. God bless.